From Don Johnson to John Wayne, the movie industry is full of high-profile actors who don't pay much heed to their spending habits. And they once truly believed that their lousy financial advisors would get them out of any monetary pickle whatsoever. And well, the aftermath of their loose wallets was more than tragic. Join us as we explore the lives of celebrities who lost all of their money. Number 9. Wayne Newton Believe it or not, versatile American entertainer Wayne Newton has entertained his audiences since he was six. It is true that Newton made his big break in the 1960s, but before that defining decade, the singer had already made a name for himself. When the musician began his singing career, he was quickly able to stand out due to his quirks and flair for being multi-talented. He would play the banjo, piano, and guitar, and had a melodious singing voice. At one point in his career, Wayne had become one of the long-performing musical acts in Las Vegas. And one would assume that the entertainer would live a rich, luxurious lifestyle while racking millions of dollars in his bank account. But oh boy, you couldn't be more wrong. Over the years, Wayne Newton has lost millions of dollars as he made feeble attempts to steal taxes or got trapped in lousy investments. The trouble began in 1980 when news channels like the National Broadcasting Company reported that Newton had an unusual side hustle. He was actually heavily involved with gang activity in the United States of America. The emerging reports cited that the entertainer was affiliated with the criminal activity generated by the notorious criminally driven Gambino family. While it was not clear what Wayne's exact role in the gang was, he was known to fund criminal operations in the hotels and casinos he co-owned or partially owned. In a split second, Wayne's popularity had dropped by millions. He began to lose business, and his fans turned their back against him. The musician took the National Broadcasting Company and the New York Times to the court of law for smearing his good name publicly, but he ended up losing all the lawsuits that he had filed. Since the court proceedings continued for a decade, Wayne's public image had become a spectacle for news reporters. Eventually, the appeals court didn't find anything malicious in the reporting done by the New York Times and the National Broadcasting Company, and once again, Wayne's image as the Hollywood gang member was solidified. Yet the musician's troubles had just begun. In 1992, Wayne Newton declared bankruptcy in the worst way possible. It was reported that the singer was ultimately out of cash and in a hefty debt that amounted to at least $20 million. At the same time, the Internal Revenue Service opened an investigation for the singer for rerouting income and property taxes that he had concealed despite owning multiple residences and hotels. It was reported that the musician had more than $300,000 in unpaid taxes. To make up for his financial losses, Newton, alongside his friend and fellow entertainer, Tony Orlando, opened a lavish 2,000-seat theater in 1997. The theater was called The Talk of the Town, and it was perhaps the most flop idea that the duo had come up with. The theater's reputation was lousy. At best, the business only hosted three to 900 people per night. As promised, the professional marriage was destined to be the talk of the talk but the duo struggled to make money to pay off their $2 million lease. On top of that, Newton again became a familiar name for the local police station when Orlando's son found recording devices in the private room shared between his dad and Wayne Newton. Since most of the audio was ineligible, Orlando didn't deem it worthy to drag Newton to the court of law. But in the eyes of the public, the entertainer had lost another public relations battle as well as a loyal friend in Tony Orlando. While the singer struggled to reclaim his spotless public image, he was once again rung up by the Internal Revenue Service for hiding his business deals to avoid taxes. Most famously, he failed to report the sale of a 200,000 Arabian horse. Upon investigation, it was revealed that the singer had also falsified the salary slips of his employees, and his wife didn't report a hefty income of at least a million dollars. Yet again, the musician was busted for making money illegally. Only this time, he was slapped with millions of dollars in fines and penalties. Wayne Newton hardly learned a lesson from his predicament, though. In 2001, he embarked on another venture to turn his 40-acre property, Casa de Shenandoah, into a Graceland type of tourist site. 
and what a disaster it was. A private company had invested $50 million into the hefty project, which, unsurprisingly, went down the drain. You see, Newton was already drowning in colossal loans that he had taken from his close friends. He had also failed to pay salaries to his employees, including his pilot, who was the custodian of his private jet. Finding himself stuck in another snafu, the singer tried to sell Casa de Shenandoah while his business partners were leasing it. You can easily guess what happened next. Newton was sued again, and the internal revenue system hunted him down for concealing property sales, too. And one would assume that it doesn't get worse than this. Well, in the case of Newton, you can always expect the worst of the worst. You see, the musician had kept many wild animals on his tourist property, but had no skills whatsoever to tame them. As he was broke, he couldn't even hire proper trainers to control his wild dogs that would attack his employees almost on a daily basis. Newton was in hot water again when he got accused of sexual harassment on his own property. Eventually, he went bankrupt, and his $50 million property was taken as collateral. Talking about the experience, he said, By the time we got to the point of leaving, I had had enough of the toll it was taking on my family. I will never back down from a fight. But when we left Shenandoah, I was just relieved. Well, his days of multi-million dollar luxury were clearly over. Wayne Newton performs cabaret shows in Las Vegas today, but you won't find him taking leisure walks around $50 million mansions. Number 8. Don Johnson There's no doubt that Don Johnson was a force to be reckoned with. After all, he was able to maintain his career over the course of almost six decades as he found his breakthrough in the role of James Sonny Crockett in the classic television series Miami Vice. But then the actor literally took a stride from being a hero to almost a Hollywood nobody who came to another case of financial carelessness. So, you can only imagine our surprise when he found his way into the movie scene again with a role in the 2019 blockbuster Knives Out. And well, good for him. Believe it or not, the actor needs every paycheck he can get his hands on. You see, in the early 2000s, Don Johnson had gone broke. It is true that the former Miami Vice actor had to grapple with a plummeting Hollywood career, but his fall from grace didn't come because of his sheer unemployment. It was his shabby way of frauding his bank that caused a major rift in his public image. In September 2003, the City National Bank of Los Angeles filed a lawsuit against the actor for not paying the hefty amount he owed to the bank. It turned out that the actor was short on $1 million, as well as $30,000 in legal fees that he owed to the bank's lawyers. The bank took Don Johnson to the court of law, where the judge promptly ordered the actor to pay up. Yet Johnson failed to cough up any money. There was only one option available to the television star. Unsurprisingly, he filed for bankruptcy. The world was shocked. There was a time when Don Johnson's career was flooded with money-making gimmicks, but poor spending habits took the best of him. The actor was known to make business deals and spend lavish money on himself, his family, and friends. He would host glamorous parties in the hopes of being remembered as an iconic socialite. But the jobs to fund those parties were hardly lining up. Don was buying almost everything on his credit, including his medicines. The media began to report that the Hollywood actor owed money to his bank, his supermarket, and his hospital. He even had a loan of $50 that he was unable to pay back. At the same time, his public image was in ruins. So it didn't help when the actor was detained by German-Swiss patrol border guards in 2002 for possessing a suitcase full of securities and credit notes worth $8 billion. Can you believe that? Criminal charges for fraud were brought against the actor. Even though the charges were later on dropped, the damage was already done. Don tried to find a money-making avenue by investing in Reese Entertainment. Ultimately, the company didn't hold its end of the bargain, and the actor had to live through another legal battle to find some returns on his investment. So, yeah, this is why Don Johnson needs to hold on to any and every job he can find. After all, a man needs a roof over his head. Number 7. Kim Basinger To be fair, we wouldn't recommend taking any financial lessons from Kim Basinger. But if you really had to take a page from her handbook of how not to go broke, lesson number one would be her advice against buying a town just because you felt like it. Yep, you heard it right. Not an apartment, not a mansion, but an entire town. 
1989, the Never Say Never Again actress decided to splurge to buy a $20 million town in Georgia called the Brazelton. Apparently, Kim didn't consult anyone before making the purchase. She had a hefty bank balance after her gig as the Bond girl. And well, she decided to fulfill her dream of turning a small indie town into a tourist attraction with a fascinating theme park. Four years went by, but the actress wasn't able to materialize her plans. She basically bought a scrap of land of no real value whatsoever. In 1993, she sold off Brazelton for only $1 million, taking a massive hit of $19 million. It is true that she was doing well for herself in the movie industry, but even another Bond role couldn't have made up for the staggering loss she had made. But there was a remedy when she married Alec Baldwin, and the couple became the most sought-after celebrity duo in the mid-90s. Kim thought she had found the love of her life, but Baldian's violent tendencies forced her to reconsider her matrimonial alliance. The dreamy honeymoon was over. Bassinger fought super hard in the divorce proceedings to hold on to her money and the portion of everything she had shared with her former husband. But eventually, she ended up paying $3 million from her own pocket. The financial loss was even more immense, as the actress also had to pay more than $8 million to her studio, Mainline Pictures, after she pulled out of a movie abruptly. Basinger was the title lead in the controversial movie Boxing Helena. She had requested Jennifer Lynch, the director of the movie, to make substantial changes to the script. While Lynch held her end of the bargain, her lead actress decided to not star in the movie at all. The end result was a turbulent lawsuit that took the best of Kim Basinger forcing her to file for bankruptcy. By the time of her lawsuit, she only had $5 million in net worth. The Hollywood roles had also dried up. And it certainly didn't help that the actress got nine whopping nominations in the infamous Golden Raspberry Awards for her mediocre acting gigs. No wonder the actress lost her grace on the screen and outside of it. Number 6. Brett Butler it was the year 2021 when a familiar but lost face emerged within the trenches of the internet with a GoFundMe page. While it is common for the underprivileged to stick to crowdfunding methods to meet their basic needs, this particular appeal for funds was unusual. After all, one of the most popular actresses from the 90s on television was asking for $15,000 to help her have a roof over her head. The familiar and memorable face belonged to Brett Butler, the veteran small-screen actress who had played the iconic role of Grace Kelly on the television show Grace Under Fire. Her friend, Lon Strickler, had made the crowdfunding page after Brett had revealed her financial woes after not paying her rent for six months for her Los Angeles apartment. It had taken a lot of convincing on Strickler's part for Brett to publicize her financial status. In every sense possible, the actress was broke, and the world couldn't believe their eyes. Butler was known to earn $250,000 per episode for her famous show. Since she filmed over 120 episodes from Grace Under Fire, the actress had a whopping net worth of $25 million in the mid-1990s. But then she lost it all. Admittedly, Brett was pretty loose with how she spent her money. Sure, she had some excellent business deals alongside her show. Still, her reputation had also taken a significant hit. Outside the show, Brett was known to be a junkie who had a knack for profligate spending. At the same time, her closest associates took advantage of her financial carelessness. Even her employees stole from her, and her advisors got her into bad business deals while they pocketed hefty commissions for themselves. It wasn't shocking that Butler had lost credibility on the set due to her excessive abuse of Vito Chin and her tendency to remain tipsy all the time. Her behavior on set was known to be pretty erratic. It had become hard for her to deliver her lines. She rarely showed up on time, and her co-stars began to leave the show because of her. And well, everyone on Grace Under Fire wanted her gone. Eventually, the sitcom was cancelled due to her carelessness. Brett had gone from being the lead star to an average third-tier television actress who barely made $5,000 daily in the blink of an eye. But of course, over time, those sporadic job offers disappeared too, and Brett was left with a conflicting drug condition, a smeared name, and loans to repay. The actress initially relied on the Grace Under Fire digital versatile disc to rack up $1 million to support her housing and essential expenditures. 
but the deal never saw the light of day, leaving the actress to pay for rehab from her savings and then putting in the remaining money to pay rent. Don't get us wrong, the actress continued to make small comebacks here and there. She appeared in The Walking Dead in 2019 and even generated some hype around Grace Under Fire. Before that, Brett also had a small role in How to Get Away with Murder. But Brett also suffered through depression that came at the expense of her failed, abusive marriage. The actress indeed never recovered from the loss of her financial troubles. But at long last, her reputation on television sets has improved exponentially. Brett Butler now hopes to make a comeback on the small screen. And in the process, she would also want to find a leg to stand on. Number 5. Susan Richardson Remember Susan Bradford from the comedy drama 8 is Enough? Well, the actress Susan Richardson wasn't the shiniest star in Hollywood. But in the late 70s and early 80s, she certainly had the flair for being one of the most recognizable faces on television. Then suddenly, Richardson disappeared from the scene. The actress only began to gain media attraction again at 2013, and you'd be shocked at the opening lines of an article published by the Huffington Post. The media outlet reported that the former Eight Is Enough star Susan Richardson is reportedly broke, living in a trailer and suffering from devastating health problems. And well, her fans were understandably confused. What went down in the actress's life that she was living on welfare in a trailer park? Well, it turns out that Susan officially lost all television roles by 1989, forcing her to leave her lavish life behind. She desperately needed work, but her subpar acting credits as well as unattainable body standards left her on the margins. While filming Eight is Enough, the actress had given birth to her daughter. The rumor on the block suggested that Richardson was about to lose her role because she was unable to shred her pregnancy weight. Panicked, the actress tried very dangerous ways to lose weight, including consuming copious amounts of cocaine. The news of her dangerous drug habit also made its way to the mainstream. While she was able to retain her role in the show, she lost credibility among the television producers. Soon enough, she began to struggle with severe health problems. Reportedly, the actress has suffered three mini-strokes, lives with a dangerous case of diabetes, and has lost her teeth due to underlying health conditions. So, even though the actress wanted to get back into acting, her physical condition wouldn't deem her worthy of any role. Now, after spending all of her wealth on her medical expenses, Richardson lives in a rotten trailer in Wagontown, Pennsylvania. The Huffington Post also reported that Susan doesn't even have the means to get a heating system for her trailer. Every winter, she lives through harsh, cold nights reminiscing about her golden television age. Number 4. Gary Busey Oh, Gary Busey. The infamous Hollywood legend was once on the top of his game. Busy found his breakthrough role as the late singer in the critically acclaimed movie The Buddy Holly Story. The Academy Awards even acknowledged Gary for his incredible performance. Following his critical and commercial success, he also starred in movies like Point Break and Lethal Weapon. We don't have to tell you this, but Gary's subsequent movies racked up millions of dollars worldwide. But then, something bizarre happened. The Hollywood Reporter described his career nosedive in the following words. The actor, who was one of Hollywood's most promising leading men, has since been relegated mainly to cameos in projects like Sharknado movies. So what really happened? Well, everything comes down to the actor's tragic motorcycle crash in 1988, which resulted in a severe brain injury. Gary found himself completely uncensored and way too honest. His very verbose tendency wasn't appreciated by the movie producers, who wouldn't tolerate any telling off from Boozy. The actor's acting skills also plummeted as he turned super erratic on the sets of movies. Even his own son once accepted that he perhaps lost his dad right after his turbulent accident. Despite several medical troubles, Boosie didn't give up on his career altogether. But of course, he hadn't realized that learning lines would be a task on its own. While some of the producers kept up with his incapacity to deliver dialogues and act, the news of his subpar skills wasn't exactly hush-hush. Later on, it was also revealed that the actor was solely responsible for his motorcycle accident. Not only was he speeding on a turbulent road, but he wasn't wearing a helmet either. 
Despite multiple warnings, the actor had failed to keep up with the security protocols of a dangerous sport. So, even his closest associates found it a bit difficult to sympathize with his situation. Eventually, Gary Busey lost his Hollywood flame entirely. It was his wife who took on the responsibility to look after him. In the actor's own words, if it weren't for the kindness of his significant other, he would have ended up in an old age home. What his wife Stephanie didn't know was that her husband had taken out massive loans to keep up with his eccentric Hollywood lifestyle, even when the roles had dried up. In 2012, it was reported that Gary had filed for bankruptcy after defaulting on a debt as hefty as $500,000. Boozy's financial troubles took away his career from him, but perhaps the loss of his legacy haunts the actor the most. Number 3. Willie Ames I went from eating at the White House to sleeping in the bushes. Those are the words of the once legendary actor Willie Ames, who had found fame through television shows like Eight is Enough and Charles in Charge. The actor once revealed that he was solely racking at least a million dollars from Eight is Enough. Then in the blink of an eye, Ames lost his wife, his children, his stellar career, and his house and car. It all happened so quickly that the actor took years to accept his predicament while sleeping in the bushes around the Hollywood Bowl. It was Willie Ames' accountant who had advised him to invest his earnings in a shaky coal mine business. Coal was the new gold of Ames' time. So, he took the advice and poured all of his money into a deal that would never give him any return. The business turned sour pretty quickly. The Internal Revenue Service hunted down Ames for failing to pay at least $400,000 in taxes. Confused and perplexed, Ames gave his all to get out of the legal pickle, but the price was too hefty. He lost his house and his family. His wife decided to leave him at the apex of the financial row. At this point, the actor only had $5 in his pocket. He also had to live through the dire experience of seeing his house go into foreclosure. The teen heartthrob, who had everything in the palm of his hands, was suddenly living on the streets. Ever since Ames has been a vocal advocate for teaching young stars the importance of potent budgeting and financial literacy, he has appeared in many podcasts and interviews to discuss his former irresponsible tendencies that led him to grave financial turmoil. Ames has cited the importance of staying vigilant when hiring financial advisors, agents, and lawyers because even if you employ these people, they still have disproportionate power to render you penniless, exactly what happened to Willie Ames at the crux of his illustrious career. Talking about the experience, the actor said, There are so many things you just don't count on. You can be on a hit show and suddenly you have a writer's strike and you're out of work. But your bills are the same. Today, Ames has turned his life around as a financial advisor. Gone are his lavish days of lounging in his mansion, but the former actor has learned a valuable lesson. Number 2. John Wayne The legendary actor needs no introduction. After all, the scapegoat actor had redefined what it meant to be a Hollywood star in the genre of Western films. But after servicing the movie industry for 25 years, the actor found himself broke and bankrupt. By then, Wayne had racked millions in his account. However, his financial advisor convinced him to invest in multiple money-losing deals. The actor didn't pay heed to his bank account until his passion project, the ambitious Battle of the Alamo, forced him to invest his life savings into production costs. Wayne also took multiple loans to produce the movie with a hefty budget of $18 million, but the movie proved itself to be a mid-blockbuster that only garnered $20 million in profits. As a result, the Duke was left with no spare money whatsoever. On top of that, he also had to repay the loans that he had taken out with the promise of creating a cinematic masterpiece. It took John Wayne years to realize that his ambition clouded his capacity as a producer. He would have expensive ideas to pull off without any real sense of what the audience really wanted to watch at that time. After the failure of the Battle of the Alamo, the Duke got an explosive reputation for working on flop films. Despite his best efforts, he really wasn't able to recover from the financial slump. His Hollywood game was also weakened by his old age and the cancer diagnosis that eventually took his life. Number 1. Tori Spelling you might not know this, but Tori Spelling is a Nepo baby through and through. 
She's the daughter of the celebrated movie producer Aaron Spelling, who had a net worth of $600 million at the time of his death. Yet Tori only got $800,000 as part of her inheritance. You see, the actress had a knack for spending fifty dollars to $60,000 on a shopping spree. Her parents weren't letting her go wild by giving her access to a hefty bank account. This is why Spelling was driven to make something out of her career. She would go on to open an antique store that would go out of business in less than two years. Once again, she had to go back to her mother to help her through her financial lows. It was generally speculated that Tori was causing a huge rift in her marriage due to her bad spending habits. After all, she had built a pattern of moving her husband and kids to a new mansion every six months to generate profit on her properties. The extra money never came. In fact, in the midst of her expensive divorce, she was forced to live in a trailer as she paid off her huge credit card debts. Perhaps Aaron Spelling was right in not giving his daughter millions of dollars to waste on unrealistic business ideas and bad properties. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.